Oh, Emily, come quick. You'll miss it. What, 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 what? Where, where is it? Where's what? Well, what, what am I missing? It's the sundial. It's right. Just look at the six o'clock shadow. It's absolutely mathematically, oh, you're, you're in the way of the sun, Emily. Look, the style is set square on true north. This is the 15th of June. Our cell phones are updated automatically to match Eastern Standard Time. But see, my cell phone is exactly 19 minutes and 20 seconds behind the shadow. The precise difference between our local time and Eastern Standard Time. Emily, getting this right has been a symbol of man's whole search for astronomical truth. And to think it's the sundial, which is true, and your cell phone and all timepieces are wrong. The sundial is a first-hand personal relation with truth. When you take your time from a clock, you're getting information from a machine. You're nothing but a clock yourself. Oh, oh to tell time by the shadow of the sun? So natural and simple. I wouldn't call it simple. Here on this diagram, I have worked it out. <laughs> oh, you know, I can't understand diagrams. But I get the feeling of it, Ian. The sun, the North Star. Oh, I love to think that your sundial is set by the North Star. If I could travel long enough, I'd get to the North Star. Look at this slow shadow. And what you see is the spin of the Earth on its axis. It's not so much the measure of time, but time itself made visible. Oh, Ian, which do you think is more wonderful, space or time? Both are too large for our minds to fully comprehend. Do you know, Ian, that's the one thing about them I don't quite like. You can't get very intimate with them, can you? They make you so humble. That's one nice thing about machines. Sometimes a machine can be wrong. Don't you want to live in a first-hand relation to truth? Well, yes, I, yes, I do, generally. It gives me the feeling of having touched vast forces and lifts me out of the routine of our lives, which is itself a construct, a machine. Let's do it. Let's can the clocks. Emily, how wonderful. Can the clocks and live by the non-automatic sundial as a pledge that we ourselves refuse to be automatons. I shall never again have anything to do with a clock. Emily, I didn't think you had it in you. Do you solemnly swear to live by the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. Bring them. Bring? The clocks. Our house is full of things that display man-made time. Go get those clocks. Why? We're going to dispose of them. Put them right here next to the sundial, and tomorrow we'll get rid of them all. It will be our pledge to live by true time. What is a clock? Something agreed upon and arbitrarily imposed upon us. Standard time, not true time. Symbolizing the whole standardization of our lives. Why? A clock is a little machine that shuts us out from the wonder of time. Who thinks of spinning worlds when looking at a clock? But the sundial, because there was creation, because there are worlds outside our world, because space is rhythm and time is flow. <laughs> that, that, that shadow falls precisely there and not elsewhere. Let, let's start with the kitchen timer. It will be the first item for our symbolic grave. Yeah, we'll, we'll gather the clocks as symbols of all that is clock-like in our minds. When we are done, all that a clock-like world has made of us will lie buried here. 
Oh, this this was a wedding present. No wonder marriages fail. Yeah, I I wonder if we hadn't better keep this one until tomorrow. Uh, Jerry gave it to us. You know he's coming for dinner. He might not understand our throwing away his clock. Ah, his failure to understand need not limit our lives. Uh, I like this clock. I, I liked to hear it go off. The sundial doesn't tick, does it, Ian? Why should it tick? Do you know, Ian, I, you know, sometimes I like to hear the ticking of a clock. Oh, oh, Ian, I, I, I don't think we ought to get rid of that one. It's, it's the clock my grandmother used when she started housekeeping. Hmm, and see what it did to her. Oh, you were glad enough to get her pies and cookies. <laughs> well, well, she had all the small virtues, but a standardized mind. She lacked scope. And now, your watch, Emily. Oh, I, I, I thought I'd keep my wristwatch, Ian. They're popular accessories these days. We are going to let the truth be our accessory, Emily. Well, but th this watch was a graduation present symbolizing all the standardized arbitrary things you were taught, commemorating the clock-like way your mind was made to run. Free yourself of that watch, Emily. Is, is this all you found in the house? Oh, what, what about the front hall clock? Oh, Ian, not that. I, I rely on that when I'm getting out of the house in the morning. <laughs> How would I get to work on time? The train doesn't run by the sun. <laughs> then the sun, then the, the, the train is wrong. <laughs> oh, but, but Ian, if the train is wrong, we have to be wrong to catch the train. That's civilization. Uh -huh. Go get the hall clock, Emily. Oh, but, but, but I love the way it chimes. So, so loud and sure. All false things are loud and sure. Ian, couldn't you fix the sundial to be set and go off? Set and go off? No, sine sole silio. What, what did you say? I said sine sole silio. It's a Latin motto for the sundial. It means without sun, I am silent. Silence is a great virtue. <laughs> now we can be free. Emily, think of life. Think what life is going to be, done with approximations, done with machine thinking. In a world content with false time, we will be true. Oh, yes, I want to be true. It's just that it's a little hard to be true in a false world. Uh, for instance, tomorrow, I have an appointment with the dentist. If I come on sun time, I suppose I'll be 20 minutes well. If you will just let me explain this table. Oh, well, tell him you're living by the truth. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid he'll charge me for it. <laughs> and when we ask people for dinner at seven, they'll get here at what, 20 minutes of seven? Or no, or will it be 20 minutes after seven? Uh, it will be a part of eternal time. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Only pot roast isn't so eternal. <laughs> Why do they have clocks wrong? Oh, Emily, uh -huh. I've explained it so many times. Living within, but 300 miles east of the time zone border, we are living by the mean solar time of Philadelphia. Do you want to live by the mean solar time of Philadelphia? Oh, certainly not. Well, then... Philadelphia? Has, has Philadelphia got the right time? It's right. Six miles this side of Philadelphia. Well, we might move to Philadelphia. Hmm? Now, Ian, this sun clock, is it running? Oh, well, it doesn't run. It's acted upon. Oh, well, is it being acted upon? As surely as the sun shines. And. It is shining today, isn't it? Well, will you tell me the time? 
I forgot to bring my cell phone. Come here. Do you see where the shadow falls? From its millions of spin, oh, you're in the way of the sun, Marlene. It's millions of spinning miles. The sun casts that shadow and here, we know that it is eight minutes past six. Isn't that wonderful? I wish John can make a sun clock, but he's not handy around the house. Past six, well, I must hurry back. John gets home for his supper at half past six. <laughs> oh, Marlene, don't get his supper by sun time. It wouldn't be, well, it, it might get cold. You see, John is coming home by the mean solar time of Philadelphia. Who said he was? Oh, oh it, it's all so false and arbitrary. In, do you think Marlene had better be false and arbitrary too? Uh, John might rather have his supper than the truth. What's this about my being false? And arbitrary? Well, well you, you see, Marlene, you have to be. We, we don't blame you. But can you live by the truth if John doesn't work by it? This is the first word I ever heard said against Johnny. Marlene, since you are not trying to establish a direct relation with truth, you can say that it is five minutes before six. Emily. The clock would be clear to you if you would establish a first-hand relation with this diagram. It explains to you where the clocks are slow. You mean your sun clock's wrong? All other clocks are wrong. You live by the mean solar time of Philadelphia. I do no such thing. Well, yes, you do. You see, the sun can't be both here and in Philadelphia at the same time now, could it? So we have to pretend to be where it is in Philadelphia. Who said we did? Well, the government. Congressman. Uh, but, but Eon and I, oh, oh, don't trip over the clocks, Marlene. Uh, my grandmother's clock. <laughs> uh, oh yes, that clock has done harm enough. Tick, 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 messing up eternity. I must get John his supper. Emily, how I love you when your feelings lift you out of routine. You're like the sundial. Your sensitive nature casts the shadow of your feelings all around you. I am. I uh, seem to have come ahead of time. Oh, Jerry, <laughs> we are living by sun time now. You haven't arrived for 20 minutes. I haven't arrived for 20 minutes. Why, well, I do seem to be here. So, this is the famous sundial. How interesting. Quite attractive, too. Oh, it's more than that. Is it? Mm, it's a symbol. It means that Ian and I are done with approximations that have been arbitrarily and falsely imposed upon us. Well, I should think you would be. Who's been doing that to you? Oh, oh, don't step on the clocks, please. This is a symbolic grave. The lies we inherited lie buried here. Well, I should think that might be quite a graveyard. So the sundial is built on lies. Oh, indeed, it is not. Does it keep time? It doesn't keep time, it gives it. Well, it gives it wrong. It's 20 minutes fast. <laughs> Don't you know that your cell phone is programmed to run by the mean solar time of Philadelphia? Yet here you are in Provincetown, where the sun is a very different matter. Your cell phone can't be right because it has no direct relation with the sun. That doesn't worry me very much. No, it wouldn't worry you, Jerry. You're, you're, you're too perfect a product of a standardized world. I get you. You're gonna cast off standard time and live by solar time. Lies for truth. But how are you gonna connect up with other people? 
well, we still have our cell phones, so we can keep track of how other people calculate time, then allow for their mistakes. Of course, this is all a joke. If you're going to use your cell phone anyway, why bother going backward to calculate time? Technology has already worked it out all for us. You get no sense of wonder in looking at a machine. Yes, I do. I always thought they'd get in the correct time whenever I looked at my cell phone. It's perfectly wonderful. I still don't understand how that works. What's this standardized snake? Yeah, that's my diagram correcting the sun. Does one correct the sun? Ian, correcting the sun? You see, there are only four days in the year when the apparent time is the same as the average time. Oh, do you mean to tell me that the sun is not right with itself? I've tried to explain it to Emily, but you said you could get the feeling of it without understanding it. This curve marks the variation here today. You see, the shadow is right, as you call it. That is average. It will be right again in here in September and again on December 21st. Ian, uh, do you mean to say the sun only tells the right sun time four days in the year? It, it always tells the right sun time, but here, the said right sun time is 15 minutes behind its own average. And here, it is 16 minutes ahead. This scale here, across the bottom, shows you the number of minutes to add or subtract. Well, add? Subtract? Then you and your son are false. No, oh, no, Emily, not false. Merely intricate. Merely not regular. Machines are regular. Now, you want to get rid of all the clocks so we can live by the sun, and now it turns out that I have to live by that, ooh, that snake. I suppose you have to do something to fix the North Star, too. Yes. The North Star is not true North. You, you can't cook without a timer of some kind. We still have to establish a first-hand relation with the spaghetti. <laughs> you use your minds. To tell time? How do we tell time when it's dark? Uh, how will we know when it's time to go to bed or to the movies? What do folks do when it rains? Sine sole sidio. You'd rather have a clock than grow. I'd rather be a fool than a machine. I never definitely elected to be either. I want to hear the ticking of a clock. Yes, it's a nice thing to hear. As I said before, it's better to accept things that have been all worked out for you. Ian, I'm terribly worried and a little hurt about the sun. The sun has failed me. The North Star is false. We're both trying to run by the sun, that, that wobbly sun, and everyone else is running by Philadelphia. Very well. Then keep your clocks. Now you're talking. And we spend our lives 19 minutes and 20 seconds apart. Oh, you mean we'd never get together? Time would lie between us. I refuse to go back into a clock world. It was you, Emily, who proposed to give up the clocks and live in this first-hand relation to truth. Well, I, I didn't know that I was proposing a first-hand relation with that, that snake. It's not a snake. It's a little piece of the long, winding road to truth. I created it myself, and it puts me on that road. <laughs> you could laugh, uh, or if you feel no need for the truth. And Emily, if you don't want to feel time... Return to your little clocks. What is a clock? A clock is the soulless. Oh, oh, the, the alarm clock. Oh. oh. Emily, if you listen to the voice of that clock. Oh, oh it's good to hear the ticking of a clock. Oh. Ian, what are you doing? I have no more choice but to bow down to the mechanical. Well, I had thought life was going to be so beautiful. 
Emily, stop fretting about the sun and stars. Here's your watch. Oh. <laughs> What's that? The clock I gave you? You were going to get rid of my wedding present? Well, I'm not accustomed to having my gifts tossed aside. Oh, Ian, I've come to see your sun clock again. Oh, do you take it in at night? The sundial has been evicted and is no more. You've gotten rid of the sun clock? <sighs> That's how a smart man is appreciated. Why can't you keep it here? It cannot live in this world where no one wants truth. This is a world for clocks. Well, I want truth. And so does Johnny, if you'll excuse my saying so. After you've made such a thing that's right, you shouldn't just throw it away, even if there is nobody to want it. And now that I want it, <sighs> now, there it is, Ian, and as good as before. And there's time for it to make its shadow before the sun has gone. Now, what time would you say it was? Uh, I would say it was 20 minutes of seven, Marlene. And your clock is saying it is 20 minutes past six. Well, I say, let those who want sun time have sun time. And let those who want tick time have tick time. <laughs>